Hello, Patrick Fay here with another review of the 2019 Rugby World Cup. So we're in semi-finals time this weekend and I'm wearing the Wales jersey because Wales is the only country that's still in it uh, where I actually have a jersey. So um, I'm in no way Welsh but on that basis I'm going to get behind Wales um, also, as one of the four teams remaining, the only one that hasn't won a World Cup. Starting by going back and having a look over the quarterfinals last week, and, uh, and then obviously reviewing our semi-finals games coming up this weekend. Uh, there's no, no real way around this. Um, the first quarterfinal was a pretty disappointing result for the Wallabies going down 40 to 16 against England uh, and obviously Australia's World Cup is now over. Um, look this is a, a disappointing one I think not not just because they were beaten I don't think that was unexpected but I would have liked to have seen would have liked to have seen a bit of a closer game I think. Um, yeah, so a, a bit of a, a bit of a fallout from that. Forty to sixteen. It's it's not really good enough uh, at any in any game, let alone a, a World Cup quarter final. I, I I just don't. Yeah, you can't you can't concede that many points and expect to win the game. Um, I, I guess the other thing they did have some good moments. Um, so only. Only 17 to 9 at half time, so they were okay in the first half, and then they got that try um, and 18 16 early in the second half. There was a, a you know, there was a real chance there. Um, yeah, any time they, any time they did something positive, England were able to respond. Um, it just seemed like they were doing it easily, and, and that's a great example. They got within two points, and before you could really start thinking, hey, there might be a comeback here. England had scored again and the margin became larger and the Wallabies didn't score any more points for the rest of the game. So that's a, yeah, that's a pretty disappointing way for their World Cup to have ended. That's only the third time that the Wallabies haven't made it past the quarterfinals. Looking back, um, every time they've been knocked out at the quarterfinals has been against England. Um, so. Yeah, that's not a good sign if the Wallabies are playing England in a quarter-final, but looking at those other examples, 2007, they finished on top of their, finished on top of their pool and then were beaten 12-10, and in the 95 World Cup in the quarter-finals, they were beaten 25-22. to So you look at those two previous times, they, they've been knocked out in the quarter-finals, they've at least been close games. So I think that's what makes this particularly disappointing and looking back it, it's it's probably Australia's worst showing at, at a World Cup. I think they showed some promise when they played Wales that they w could have been a team that could have done a little bit better but we just never really saw the best of them. Um, yeah England, England just proving far too strong there and continuing a uh, strong recent run of wins against the Wallabies so Bit of a fallout from there. Obviously, Michael Checker is gone, so they'll have to look for a new coach. And some of the uh, more experienced players, David Pocock, Will Genia, uh, Adam Ashley Cooper, I, I think that that's um, the last we'll see of them in, in Wallabies colours. So um, there'll be a few changes. Um, uh, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see what. Uh, who the new coach is and, and what the makeup of the Wallabies team is going to look like, I guess, um, over the next four years has got to be a time they look at building towards the next World Cup after, um, yeah, after a pretty disappointing result uh, and a, a lot of lot of rugby fans, a um, lot of Australian rugby fans, not particularly happy with that. So I think for the moment they they've just got to. They've just got to put it behind them, move on as best as they can. I guess the other surprising thing, the four results, the, uh, the winners, none were totally unexpected, but we only really, we only had one close game out of the four, which was 
France versus Wales, and and then the other your other games you had a clear dominant side, and and in all of them there was only ever really one team that was going to win it. So I, I think it. At knockout stage, you expect closer games, but that's not always going to happen. Second game on the Saturday night was New Zealand versus Ireland. Again, not, an unex not unexpected that the All Blacks would win that game, but 46-14, I think Ireland would have hoped for a better showing than that. Um, particularly 22-0 at half-time. They did make a little bit of a comeback, getting a couple of tries on there at the end, but... Yeah, look, that's a pretty disappointing way for them to have gone out um, and, yeah, uh, uh, quite a dominant performance from the All Blacks going into the semi-finals. The, so, the first game on Sunday, Wales versus France, was probably the, the one really exciting, <laughs> really exciting game out of the four, I thought. So, France coming out of the blocks, uh, very strong they're scoring two tries in the first seven minutes uh, and actually leading Wales 19 to 10 at half time looked like they might uh, be able to pull off another another upset I guess you would have called it the the key factor there obviously the red card to France in the second half um, and going down to 14 men they hung in there but they just couldn't quite hold on Wales eventually coming back and managing to snatch that one by one point to get them through to the semi-finals. And then the last one on the Sunday night hosts Japan in their first ever quarter final. I, I thought put up a pretty good effort against South Africa. Um, I, th I think the key there is just South Africa's size and strength uh, and, and their defense, whatever Japan threw at them, they, they can be a very exciting attacking side and they haven't, haven't struggled to score points during this World Cup, but South Africa managing to hold them out um, I think a, a really good sign for, for the South Africans. They really did uh, hang in there. It was 5-3 at half time. Not until sort of that last 15 minutes that South Africa ran away with it a little bit. Uh, I, I thought a, a pretty good showing for Japan and, and they, um, I would say, put up a better fight uh, against a quality side than uh, maybe more highly regarded teams like Australia and Ireland did, so something for them to be proud of. Which, of course, means that going into the semi-finals, tomorrow night, Saturday, we have England versus New Zealand, and then on Sunday, it's Wales versus South Africa. So the winners of those games obviously going through to the final, uh, and the losers will play off uh, for third place in the bronze medal match. So either way, two more games for all four sides in this tournament. So yeah, I'll start with England and New Zealand. Obviously, you'd say that New Zealand are the favourites there. Even uh, Eddie Jones happy to take the underdogs tag for England there. Uh, and, and that might work in their favour. Uh, so he said that no one expects them to win, so they've got no pressure on them. Whereas the All Blacks, obviously, they're, tr they're trying to... Um, trying to stay in there to win their third straight World Cup. Look, yeah, maybe there is a little bit more pressure on the All Blacks. I still think that they will win this one. Uh, I just haven't... It, it's an interesting one because neither of these sides have really looked like losing up to this point, but uh, one of them's going to have to. So only one of them can get through to the finals, so an impressive run in this tournament will come to an end. Um, I, I just haven't seen anything that suggests that the All Blacks um, are not still the favourites to win this. Uh, and particularly against England, the recent record doesn't particularly favour them. Overall, head-to-head, um, -head, they've played 41 times, 33 wins to New Zealand, 7 to England and 1 draw. But if you look in more recent history, uh, out of the last 15 times they've played, only one win to England coming back in 2012. Um, and they've played pretty much every year since then with the All Blacks winning on all, uh, winning every time. So I, I don't think that, that's not a good stat for England. You can't always go, uh, you can't always go on that. We've probably got to look a little bit closer at how they've been playing in the tournaments. And, and as I said, they've both been both been really good so far, but 
Um, I, I just think that experience of the All Blacks will be enough to get them over the line. But uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting times. You've obviously got Northern Hemisphere versus Southern Hemisphere in each game. We, we could end up uh, with an All Southern final or an All Northern one or, or one of each. So uh, still a few possibilities there. Then the second game on Sunday, Wales versus South Africa. Uh, th that's another one where overall record would favour South Africa. Um, but just looking a little bit more recently, there's some good stats in there for Wales as well. Overall, 35 times, 28 wins for South Africa, 6 for Wales and 1 draw. Now, the last time they played uh, at, at the World Cup in the quarterfinals, South Africa actually knocked Wales out, winning 23 to 19. That's the last time South Africa have beaten Wales in a test match. So they've played four times since then, and Wales have won all of them. So that's that's pretty good stat for Wales. Um, Again, I think you've probably got to look a little bit more at how they've been going in this tournament. Um, and South Africa, with the exception of that loss to New Zealand, they've just looked really strong to me, whereas Wales have had a couple of close calls, obviously narrowly beating, uh, narrowly beating the Wallabies in the pool stages and just managing to beat France in that quarterfinal. So they've done it a little bit tougher. So, so I guess that shows that uh, when they're up against it, they um, they still know how to play through and get the win. But um, yeah, maybe just the dominance South Africa has shown, um, I would say, would have them as the favourites. But this is another one where, even though I think South Africa is probably the more likely team to win, uh, I'd, I'd like to see Wales get through. Look, it's, it's, it's hard to call them an, an underdog, but when you're looking at World Cups and, and of the four teams remaining, they probably are. Not only haven't they won a World Cup, they've actually never qualified for a final before. So for them to, to be able to do that for the first time is something I'd really like to see. Uh, just for, for South Africa, um, if you have a look at their history, 1995, they won their first World Cup. 12 years later in 2007, they won their second. So uh, if you go if you go with the rule that they win a World Cup every 12 years, then yeah, 2019 is their year. But uh, look, very much anyone's for the taking, but I'm feeling like the most likely scenario will be New Zealand versus South Africa in the final. And I think that the All Blacks are still your favorites to win it. But you know, anything can happen in the knockout stage. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens uh, this weekend and then obviously next weekend with the final. Um, so a little bit disappointing that the Wallabies uh, and Japan, who I'd sort of adopted as my second team, no longer in it. Um, so not quite as much excitement, but having followed this one so closely, still interesting to see the outcome and to watch these last few games. So looking forward to it. Um, I think I'll be back with another Another preview next week, uh, just before the last, uh, just before the finals, and then maybe one more to wrap up when the tournament's done. Okay, thanks, guys.